Hey there Wargamers and welcome back to another Wargames Delivered video. In this video, we're going to be speed painting a Lannister Guardsman. Let's get started. Okay, so to start this mini off, we uh, based it with a gray to white zenithal highlight. And uh, the reason for that is we're going to primarily be using speed paints in this video. Um, I've really been liking the results on the Stark minis I've painted with them so far, so we're going to go ahead and keep going with those. Uh, moving into our first step here, we're going to switch over to Grim Black, and with this we're going to pretty much just cover the boots of the model um, and a couple other areas as well, like the, uh, um, the cloak in the middle, uh, where it separates in the middle there, we're going to cover that area as well, um, and just a couple other small bits on the model here. A couple other areas we're going to pick out are going to be the gloves and the scabbard of the sword on the back of the model here. And when using this speed paint method, you'll want to be very careful around uh, the rest of the white areas. Try to be as neat as possible. Um, of course, we are going to go back with some, uh, some white and some grays to kind of cover up the uh, areas where we are a little bit sloppy. So I'll show you how to fix that. If you do make any mistakes, uh, just keep that in mind. Before we go into the close-up, we're going to take some matte white and some stone golem and mix them together here. And with this, we're just going to clean up any areas where uh, we made uh, some mistakes with the grim black. And you'll want to keep repeating this step after every speed paint step uh, in the video. And even though uh, the grim black is a speed paint, we're still going from a black to a white in uh, this cleanup process here. So. Be careful, do a couple uh, thin coats, usually two to three thin coats will get you a nice even color and will cover up all of the mistakes you made with the black. And don't really worry too much if uh, the uh, cover up color that you're using here is a little bit darker than your, your base coat in some areas. Um, when it dries, it will dry a little bit darker than, uh, than, you put it on, than when you put it on. Um, so keep that in mind, and also um, we're going to be going back over this with speed paint anyway, so most of those mistakes will get covered up. And again, just try to get nice even coverage with this color. Uh, use as many thin coats as you need to to uh, build up that highlight once again. Once you've got those steps finished, we're going to switch over to our next step here, but keep in mind the uh, off-white cleanup stage. We're going to use that again uh, constantly throughout the video. I'm not going to show it again, but just remember that I've, I've, in this video I used it back and forth with the speed paints pretty much after every step. Uh, so here we're switching over to Slaughter Red, and with this we're going to cover the entire cloak of the model. Um, and that's pretty much the only area we're going to hit with this. Just be uh, very careful again around all the white parts. Uh, around the belt of the model and the lion insignia on the chest. And try not to go over the black areas as well, uh, for obvious reasons, and it's kind of hard to clean up speed paint over speed paint in some cases. Uh, usually on top of black it's not too hard to clean up, but some paints uh, are a little bit more difficult than others. Once you've got that step finished, we're going to switch over to dark wood, and with this we're going to cover the uh, little area of pants that are poking through on the model right down here, and all of the belts and straps and pouches of the model. This speed paint has a uh, pretty heavy pigment, so be careful, uh, especially when going around the red areas that we just painted. Um, it, uh, it can get a little bit muddy if you... Uh, if you mess up a little bit so just be very careful and uh, if you do get any on the red or the black areas best way to clean it up is just to take the white like we did earlier cover the entire area and just go over it again I know it's kind of a process but that's the best way I've found to uh, fix your speed paint errors without them looking super patchy so as usual take your time uh, with this step and especially when you're doing the belt uh, be very careful around the red um, can be a very tricky area. Sometimes it's best to uh, put your speed paint, put the majority of your speed paint on an area that's uh, not really close to the red, like this pouch here, for example, and then just move it around the belt. Um, that's kind of how I like to work. Sometimes using a smaller brush works. Whatever uh, is uh, easier on you, uh, that's, what I, that's what I recommend.
And with these speed paints, you'll generally want to give them about 15 minutes to dry, 20 minutes to dry. Um, and we're going to switch over to Gravelord Gray here. And with this, uh, we're going to cover all of the areas that are going to be metallic. We're going to do a light metallic dry brush uh, later on. But first, we want to kind of establish these areas with the Gravelord Gray, get a nice kind of base coat for our uh, dry brush to go onto. And you can also do this with Grim Black, uh, the other speed paint that we used earlier in the video, if you uh, prefer a darker kind of metallic. Um, since I had already used it for the gloves and the boots, I figured I would give uh, this guy a little bit of variety, and I kind of wanted his metallic to be a little bit shinier, uh, rather than, you know, dark and dirty, since he's, he's a Lannister guy, he's probably a little bit more wealthy than, than your common soldier, so... Um, I wanted him to have a little bit more sheen, a little bit more gold and, and silver on him than, than normal. Once you've got that color established, we're going to switch over to all of the gold areas and yellow areas. Uh, and for this, we're going to switch over to Zealot Yellow. And we're going to do the same uh, kind of idea that we were using with the Gravelord Gray. We're going to cover all of the areas that are going to be gold and uh, with this zealot yellow and also the insignia on the chest but the insignia on the chest we're just going to leave the zealot yellow um, all of these other gold details we are going to uh, do a light dry brush with uh, gold later on and so here you're really looking to pick out the rim of the shield the lion on the shield uh, the hilt and pommel of the sword and uh, the little gold bits on the scabbard of the sword And with hindsight being 2020, I wasn't completely sold on this when uh, when I finished this model. Uh, so in the future, I, I may use um, like a darker orange or, or yellow to kind of get a better better gold effect on this model here. Uh, as you'll see in the final photo, I didn't really get the uh, sort of orange to yellow gold that I was looking for um, from this mo from this step. It looks okay. Um, but I'm not 100% sold on it, so I will be trying some different stuff in the future to see if I can fin uh, fix this in some way. And now we're going to switch over to, I believe, our final speed paint step on this model, and we're going to do Blood Red. And with this, we're just giving a bit of uh, variation in red on the model, so we're going to do the feathers on the uh, top of the helmet here, and we're also going to fill in the uh, white bits of the shield here as well. And with this step, of course, be very careful around the uh, zealot yellow that we placed down earlier. If you do make any mistakes, uh, just again, go back to that off-white mix that we made earlier and cover up all the areas once the speed paint is dry. And then just go back over with the zealot yellow and fix those areas. And uh, as you can see, I switched over to a smaller brush for this step. If you need to do this, uh, it definitely makes your life easier on uh, some of these bits like this. Um, you can stick with a larger brush, uh, but I always tend to make mistakes when I, when I do smaller, hard to reach areas like this. So um, as you can see, it gives us a bit of variation between the cloak uh, that we have. Um, and now we're gonna switch over to our uh, dry brush steps. So we've just got some plate mail uh, metal from the normal acrylic line, the metallic line, and we're just going to lightly dry brush this over the sword and all of the Gravelord gray areas that we established earlier. For the sword, I'm using a slightly larger dry brush, but when you uh, get to the armor, depending on your dry brushing skill, you may want to switch to a smaller brush just to make it a little bit easier and not get any silver flakes on areas that you don't want them. And as always, if you need to do any cleaning up uh, on the model um, with your normal acrylics or speed paint line after this step, please be sure to change your water or just have an entirely separate uh, pot of water for your metallic paints because you will uh, transfer uh, shiny bits and flakes over to your regular paints. So just be aware of that whenever you're using metallics. And as you can see, it gave us a very nice uh, transition kind of shine to the armor. I was actually very pre pleased with this step. I hadn't tried it before. Um, and now we're going to do the same thing with bright gold on all of the uh, zealot yellow bits, except for the insignia on the chest. The lion we're going to leave alone on his chest. But everything else, we're going to go ahead and do a light dry brush. This is actually a wash brush. Um, so you will probably need to dab back into the paint 
and do a couple uh, passes over this with the dry brush. But eventually you'll start to get a nice gold sheen on all of these armored bits here. Like I said before, if you start with an orange uh, rather than the zealot yellow that I used, you may have a better um, transition in your uh, gold color. Um, this was again, it's kind of a trial model, so I wasn't exactly 100% pleased with this. It'll work for, for tabletop standard, but I think there's some more experimenting that I need to do on this model. Nonetheless, thank you guys for watching another video. Please feel free to subscribe, like, and comment. I'd love to hear what you guys would like to see on the channel, and as always, uh, happy wargaming, and we'll see you next time.